so with the the new law like i said the following are the qualifications of who can practice infertility in india so one you have to do uh, your mbbs obviously after that you have to pursue your post graduation in uh, gynecology whether you do a dgo ship or you uh, you know you do ms obgyn or dnb uh, either of the qualifications are accepted but post your obstetric uh, of the career in obstetrics and gynecology you have to pursue 3 years of inf uh, you know uh, three years of practice in the field of reproductive medicine that is infertility so if you're a gynecologist you have just passed out gynecology and you're wanting to work as an infertility specialist you have to have experience of not less than three years under the supervision of a well-established art that is ivf clinician and with an experience of 50 pickups or more or the other criteria is post your msobgy or post your dnb you can take up a fellowship in reproductive medicine or or do a two years DM course in reproductive medicine, and again with no less of uh, three, uh, no less than three years of experience in the same field as well. So the next uh, question is. What is infertility? How can you define infertility? So WHO has defined infertility as inability to achieve pregnancy after 12 uh, months of having unprotected uh, sexual intercourse with average frequency of two to three times of coital intercourse per week and without use of any birth control measures for a couple who, uh, with female partners of age less than 35 years. Now, why less than 35 years? So as we know, age is a very prime uh, factor when it comes to female infertility because as the age increases, the ovarian reserve goes on declining, the AMH levels go on declining and also the risk of genetic abnormalities in the offsprings increase with increasing age. So if uh, there's a female, uh, if there's a couple and the female partner is less than 35 years that approximately if she's 30 years or 31 years and she's been trying since one year and having a regular uh, you know intercourse that is timed two to three uh, times per week without use of any birth controls then you can term that couple as infertile but if there is a, a couple who's more than 35 years of age and they are trying since six months uh, with the without use of any birth control measures and are trying to conceive since six months, then they will be categorized as uh, infertile. So yes, the definition of infertility will vary according to the age. Now, what are the types of infertility? So infertility is uh, primary. There, there are two types of infertility. That is primary infertility and secondary infertility. So what does primary infertility mean? Primary infertility means that the couple has never conceived in their lifetime. Secondary infertility is that the, preg uh, you know, the couple has conceived once or more than once in their lifetime, irrespective of the outcome of that pregnancy. What does that mean? If that the couple has, if the couple has conceived like, uh, you know, uh, previously and that a pregnancy has ended in a miscarriage or IUD, that is intrauterine fetal death or by, or there was a biochemical pregnancy, then they are termed as uh, secondary infertility, whereas primary infertility means they have never conceived or there has never been a sign of pregnancy, even biochemical pregnancy, then that couple is, uh, you know, uh, labeled as primary infertile couple. So what is the incidence of infertility? Now, infertility affects one in seven couples and it is the proportion of infertility is drastically uh, increasing worldwide and it has become a significant social and medical uh, problem affecting all the population. So the average incidence is about 15 to 20 percent globally and it varies according to the different races and ethnicities. Some causes of uh, infertility can be treated uh, if detected earlier and whereas some causes just cannot be treated at all and they have they need higher treatments so un unexplained infertility now this term unexplained infertility what does this mean so we all know infertility can be either due to the male factor or due to the female factor or combined factor that is male plus female factor both can contribute to infertility somewhere but when none of these factors are cause uh, are uh, you know uh, um, uh, you know are responsible for that couple being infertile it means that the female uh, investigative parameters are completely normal the male parameters are completely normal and you have not found any cause of infertility for such a couple and still they are having difficulty pursuing or conceiving a pregnancy, then this couple is labeled as unexplained infertility and un 
uh, infertility. So the chances of conceiving for a female in any given menstrual cycle is not less than 20%. Is not less than twenty percent. Many events that are necessary for preg. Uh, there are certain you know uh, chronological events that are responsible for pregnancy to occur. One is ovulation. Two ejaculation. Three fertilization. And fourth is implantation. Now I'll explain you the process. So when a female gets a menstrual cycle, we all know the first part of the menstrual cycle is known as the follicular phase. Why follicular phase? During this period, her, there is a, a thing which is known as follicular genesis. Follicular genesis as in one significant egg dominates and it starts growing under the influence of FSH. So this dominant follicle will start growing and at a specific diameter that is approximately 18 to 20 millimeters when it grows in diameter and it is mature enough and secretes enough amount of estrogen, it will cause uh, the surge of the LH hormone in the pituitary. So once the LH surge occurs, then occurs the ovulation. So after ovulation, during this around pre, uh, during the pre-ovulatory period or during, during ovulation, if there is intercourse, the semen sample gets ejaculated in the uh, female's vaginal tract and out of that only 10 percent of sperms travels through the reproductive tract and reach uh, the ampullary part of the tube where the egg is waiting for the sperm there the egg and sperm meet the fertilization process occurs there in the tube and then the growing embryo again rolls into the uterine ca cavity when it reaches the blastocyst stage it hatches itself and attaches adheres itself to the lining of the uterus which is known as implantation so these four, four prime parameters are required to be normal for any healthy pregnancy to occur in any couple so any events which will cause an interference at any of these four parameters or any of these four processes can be one of the causes of infertility now the first factor of which can affect fertility of a couple is frequency of the intercourse. Now, when you take the history, like your infertility history is going to be a little bit different than your gynecological history. You need to ask leading questions about their coital frequency, their uh, sexual life, their, uh, you know, stressors, their occupation, obviously. Again, their habits, like uh, are they into alcohol, smoking, their personal habits, how much amount of caffeine intake they are into. Again, the history comprises of their reproductive history, any use of contraceptives or any past miscarriages, uh, obstetric history, any past miscarriages, any procedures done like DNC. So these are small, small, uh, you know, history taking points are going to give you your answer. Where is the problem? So Half of the case gets solved when you take your history properly during your initial evaluation or initial first uh, approach towards the patient. Now, the coital fre frequency is recommended to be at two to three times per week. So, if depending on the frequency of the intercourse, they this study showed the probability that the couple will conceive. What is the probability that the couple will conceive within the first six months? So, if the uh, frequency of the intercourse is one time per week, there was 17% chance that the couple might conceive in the first six uh, months. But if the frequency was three times per week, then it is the chances of conceiving for that couple was 50% in the first six months. So yes, frequency of coital intercourse should be one of the history taking points in your history. Second factor which affects their fertility parameter is the timing of the intercourse. Now, like I said, there is a follicular phase, there is ovulatory phase, and then there is the luteal phase. So if the intercourse is going to occur in the follicular phase and not in the ovulatory phase, there are less chances of conception. If they are having intercourse in the luteal phase, the three times per week is happening in the luteal phase, that is post-ovulation. Again, there are less chances of uh, conception. Why? Because the, uh, you know, the expiry date, like I would like to term it in a layman's term, that the expiry date or the ovum life expectancy is of just 24 hours after ovulation, whereas the sperms can survive for up to 72 hours in the female reproductive tract. 
abstract. So for my patients, when they come to me and who are coming for preconceptional counseling, I tell them that if it is difficult for you to track your ovulation, because obviously these are working couples working in IT industries or somewhere uh, or some are doctors. So if they are not able to track their ovulation or they're not able to use the calendar method or the other methods which are implicated to detect ovulation, I just tell Tell them one simple method is once your menses drop, try to have intercourse every alternate days. That is more than enough. Why? The reason being the sperm will survive in the female tract for 72 hours and the ovum is going to be there for 24 hours. So the idea here is to keep the sperm waiting uh, when the ovulation occurs in the female tract. Also, uh, the sperm should be shortly available after ovulation in the genital tract. So uh, the third factor that affects fertility is the you know, sexually transmitted uh, diseases and the other infections. So when a female uh, comes to you with complaints in your OPD, with a complaint in your OPD that uh, she's getting recurrent white discharges or foul smelling discharges, scurdy white discharges or different colored discharges, it's important you take a swab and identify the organism causing it. Or please do not give any empirical treatment considering that okay it is just going to be one uh, organism which is causing this discharge please evaluate that person of uh, a patient for the causative organism because these organisms play a very important role in that female's fertility if she's a young couple you need to explain her about personal hygiene about proper sexual practices because gonorrhea and chlamydia are the leading causes of female factor infertility associated with pelvic inflammatory diseases now how are they going to affect the female fertility gonorrhea and chlamydia media if this infection these infections are sexually transmitted in case the female is having uh, you, uh, is having uh, intercourse with a uh, multiple uh, partners or unprotected intercourse in such cases she might be at high risk of uh, you know having these infections when these infections are present in the female tract these infections causes the tubes to swell inflamed tubes or some lesions on the tubes which can cause tubal infertility in females or inflammation of cervix hence leading to cervicitis in men again they are these infections are going to cause inflammation of the reproductive tract where the semen passage occurs that is the epid at the level of epididymis or the ure or urethra also there are accessory gland infections which which can increase the number of pus cells or can give a very viscous highly viscous viscous sample with high number of glutination agglutination which can again lead to uh, you know cause these men to be infertile where the sample count might be good the sample uh, motility might be good because but because of this infection so they might have a lot of pus cells which can again lead to infertility in these males Again, mums, you have to ask leading questions in your uh, history to the male partner as well. In during uh, uh, a history sec uh, history taking session in infertility, it is also important to focus on the male factor parameters during history taking. You need to ask the male part partner for their addictions, their occupation, their age. Uh, the stressors in their life, their personal habits, uh, again, any infections like mums, tuberculosis in their past, any operative history, especially of hernia, hydrocele, any trauma to the private parts. These are some history taking pointers which will help you to understand that in what way you have to diagnose this couple. So if there's a history of mums, obviously mums is uh, again inflammation of the glands. So it can cause orchitis or inflammation of uh, you know inflammatory testes and it can also cause secondary testicular atrophy in severe cases. Other infections which affect uh, fertility, tuberculosis being the most common in infection in India is the most common cause of female as well as male infertility in India. Toxoplasmosis, uh, plasmosis, malaria, uh, leprosy, these are again some inflammatory causes that can lead to male or female infertility. So what are the other general factors which can affect female fertility? Age of the women. Like I said, after 40 years of age, the fertility or the fecundity rate in females is dropped down by 50%. The oocyte quality goes down once you the ovarian aging process starts quite early and now that I'm seeing the patients daily in my OPD, it has actually started very, very early, I would like to say in in your 25s this process has started so 
once the ovarian reserve starts going down after the age of 25 your ovarian reserve starts going down after the age of 30 it starts declining rapidly and after the age of 35 the uh, the you know the rate of uh, depletion is quite the rate of depletion is quite rapid so once your ovarian reserve starts going down it can lead uh, uh, it can also cause you problems like uh, premature ovarian insufficiency because the ovarian reserve has drastically you know uh, dropped down uh, again, uh, as the ovarian reserve starts declining, the quality of the oocyte also starts going down in such patients. So now we are exposed to so many environmental factors, plastics, phthalates, pesticides, lead. So these are again affecting the female factor infertility by dropping down the ovarian reserve. That's why whenever a patient who's getting married and she comes to me for preconceptional counseling, even if she's age 25 or even if she's age 26, I ask her to get her AMH levels done. What is AMH again? anti-millerian hormone anti-millerian hormone you can do at any time of your uh, uh, menstrual cycle it is not uh, cycle specific like fsh and lh you can do it at any point of time of your menstrual cycle and it will give you the value of your ovarian reserve for a 25 year old female the normal ovarian reserve should be up to three for a 30 uh, 30 year old uh, women and a normal ovarian reserve should be around two and for a 35 year old woman a normal ovarian reserve should be around 1.5 to 1.9 however if anything less than that you it is better to do a follicular count or day two sonographic evaluation of such patients to check their ovarian reserve again the sonographic evaluation to check the ovarian reserve of the patient is done on day two or day three of the cycle and not beyond that that is also termed as antral follicular count uh, age of the man is also important now we have always heard that okay uh, male um, men's are fertile all their life so age of the men doesn't matter when it comes to fertility well that is completely untrue now because with the recent advances or the recent studies that have been done by ASRM it has been shown and justified that as the age of the men a man increases at uh, that around 40, uh, around 45 or if he's beyond 45 or 50 then the, there is fragmentation in the at the DNA levels of the the sperm hence leading to uh, rendering them infertile or leading to miscarriages if they conceive at that age so yes age of the man matters obviously women uh, experience that quite early in their life but men obviously they have a boon of experiencing that uh, 10 uh, years later in their life nutrition now why nutrition is important if a fem female is underweight or if she's malnourished that is her expected body she is 10 to 15 percent less than her expected body weight or if she's falls in the obese or average uh, average body type where her bmi is more than 27 or her bmi is more than 30 then in such cases she might face uh, problems with ovulation uh, challenges with ovulation hence decreasing the fertility now why does this happen this is because your entire body is guided by hormones. Your entire body functions on hormones. So if there is, if you're underweight or if you're un, uh, malnourished, your hormones are in depletion. The cortisol gets uh, get uh, gets uh, secreted at higher levels, and hence uh, imbalancing the female hormones. When you're overweight, again the same thing happens, and your uh, you know female hormones are in a state of imbalance that is the, the when you're overweight the estrogen there is estrogen dominance the estrogen levels are quite high as compared to the progesterone levels and hence you'll face menstrual problems or menstrual irregularities